Welcome to the Hire Yourself podcast. This is Pete Gilfillan. Uh, my business partner, Nat Truitt, is on special assignment today. And with the Hire Yourself podcast, we're here about helping people become entrepreneurs, to become better people. And I've got a very special guest today. You know, she's really a warrior. She's a leader. She's not a business owner yet. I hope that in the future she will be. But I wanted to bring her on today because she demonstrates what I think a business leader needs to do. And they need to be strong warriors and they need to be leaders. And so I have a very special opportunity to introduce Kate Gilfill and my daughter to the podcast today. Welcome, Kate. Hi, Dad. Thank you for having me. Oh, Kate. <laughs> So good of you to get up early uh, for this taping uh, from that standpoint. So uh, that's good. Well, thank you for giving me a platform to talk a little bit about my story and my life with All you. Right. Yeah. All right. So, Kate, the reason I brought you on is, you know, you have I think we're coming up to your two year anniversary of being diagnosed with a uh, chronic illness and you've had quite a journey for the last two years. So so let's start out at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about your story and, and your, your journey and why you're a warrior. Yeah. So going into my senior year of high school when I was 17, I was diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease which is specifically um, ulcerative colitis. It is an autoimmune disease in your colon where your body attacks itself and it really affects the function of my, my GI tract, my gastrointestinal tract. So um, I was diagnosed going into my um, senior year, like I said, and it was, um, I wasn't super sick when I was diagnosed, which isn't the case for most kids. However, I fell pretty ill um, going into March of 2020, the start of COVID-19 for most people. But for me, that was the start of my hospitalization where I spent um, the longest of 35 days in the hospital. I actually ended up getting my colon entirely removed in May of 2020. Since then, I've had three additional surgeries to try to figure this out, and I am still working to fight um, ulcerative colitis, although the last surgery was supposed to kind of put me into what I say remission. Um, it is an ongoing battle every day. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And I think you spend, a, if I remember correctly, 90 days in the hospital or something like that. So uh, yeah. you were trying to set the record for uh, people in the hospital. So um, for that standpoint. The hospital staff knows me all too well. They're, they get mad when I come back. They're like, Kate, what are you doing here? You know, like, so Kate, you know, before two years ago, we didn't know much about ulcerative colitis. And, you know, that's pretty common with people right now, isn't it? I mean, it, it's, a, it's something that it's pretty common, is it not? Yeah, so about 3.1 a million um, people suffer from IBD. Um, I mean, I know, I mean, I think my in my high school alone, my nurse told me there was at least 15 other kids who had it, which that's like a huge population for, for kids. Um, it, it is common, but the issue with the, the disease is it's an invisible illness. So you can't really see if someone has it. So that's what makes it a lot harder for people to be aware of because you can't really see that I'm sick. Yeah. And so so when you first got diagnosed, you didn't have a lot of information. You didn't know to kind of turn where to go to get that information uh, from that standpoint. And I think a, as you look forward, um, you've had this journey. But as other people are diagnosed with this, um, you're kind of on a mission, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I have definitely dived myself deeper into the, the Crohn's and colitis community. I mean, I'm super involved um, within the Crohn's and colitis foundation. Um, and I think that's something that really has helped me through my journey. Um, I also look to kind of, you know, spread kindness and posit positivity. Although I am going through a lot, um, having a positive mindset is one thing that I think has really kept me you know, going forward. Yeah, certainly having a positive mindset. You have to have a positive mindset. I don't think there's an option to that. But, you know, as you think a little bit about it, um, one of the things you shared with me is that you just want to make sure people, when they get diagnosed, have more information, that they it, it, they they kind of understand what's happening, and more importantly, that there's all kinds of resources out there. So what do you guys do with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation to, to help people as they're diagnosed or they start their journey? Yeah, so the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, which I am a part of two, um, two councils, I'm on a peer-to-peer -peer leadership council, which is 
based in Illinois and we work on um, fundraising in Illinois. And then I'm also part of the National Council of Collegiate Leaders. And I am actually the communications chair for that group. So I actually am working on our social media and basically both the missions of the group is to, you know, provide resources for, for the IBD community. So we're looking to spread awareness about mental health, you know, different surgeries. Um, we, we work actively among a group and we also work with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation to help, you know, make resource, resources more accessible because when I was going through my, um, my surgery process, you know, my mom and I, we really didn't have the resources we need to fully understand what was gonna happen. And so if I can help someone find that before they can go through surgery or they go through their IBD process, um, I think that's super important to me because it's a community and having that community is something so important when, when facing a chronic illness. So, so Crohn's colitis, uh, is is pretty common as we talked about, right? So and it's an invisible thing, and and more and more people are getting diagnosed with it. And I don't know if it's um, environmental or if it's the way in which we eat in, in a, the Western society, but the idea is that it's out there. And so we're now trying to inform more people of, hey, if if you get this, it is a chronic illness, but there's tons of resources. And you know, to provide those resources, I know you guys do a lot with fundraising, and I, I think you're coming up on something. So tell me a little bit about what you're what you're doing with your your fundraising activities yeah so fundraising is a huge part of Crohn's and colitis because all of our money goes towards one making the resources that I talked about but also it also goes towards um, research which is super important in the Crohn's and colitis um, community there's just not a lot of information about a what causes this disease like what you just mentioned but also just ways there's no cure i mean there's ways to manage it but for me all of those failed and so i am actually super excited to be part of the take steps chicagoland walk for crohn's and colitis it is um it is a fundraising event in which i am trying to raise ten thousand dollars towards um towards the for the foundation essentially Wow, that's a great goal for us to put. I'll, 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 uh, I'll do a little bit of match for you. So whatever you raise, I'll, I'll do some matching because I think it's such an important cause. So tell us about the event. So when is it and how does it work? So there's two events. There's a Chicago event on June 6th, which will be a scavenger hunt throughout Chicago. Um, so you can remain socially distanced during this COVID time. And then June 12th um, at the Yellow Box Community Christian Church, there'll be kind of like a car event and there'll be different booths for people to come. Um, it's really important that you sign up. And um, so there's different ways you can either donate or you can join a team. So I, my team name is Kate Stolen Cullen. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, That's because, really good. You know, essentially, you can go to my page, which is online.ccfa.org slash go to Kate Stolen Cullen. Uh, you can join my team, support me, and also donate there. Can you one more time on the on where, where they can go? Yeah, yeah. online.ccfa.org slash go to slash Kate's stolen colon. All right. So a lot of our, our listeners aren't here in Chicago. So if they want to be involved in, in, in donate, they certainly can do that from at some point. You know, so so we've got these events and, and I know this is a big thing. It, it helps helps raise the money for the research and, and providing communications to help people from some point. So, you know, as you think about your journey, uh, you're a college student. Right. And uh, you're a former athlete. So, you know, as you think about your journey going forward, uh, the first question I got is that, you know, being an athlete, uh, kind of a, a, a very competitive athlete in high school, did being an athlete help you through the, the last two years? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I started competitive sports at a really young age and I actually developed a love for basketball. Um, and I mean, I would travel the the nation and I go back to the days where, you know, I'd play three plus games and you get to that final game and you're like, I feel like I have nothing left to give, you know, but then you kind of have to sit down and, and rally and, and, and continue on. And, and for me, when I got to, to those dark days in the hospital where I thought, you know, I don't know if I can beat this, you know, that mindset of, you know, you can't, you can't give up, you have to continue, you got to keep going like you have energy left to give I think that's something that's really shaped my journey in that sense that 
it's sometimes you you don't want to but you you have to yeah you got to suck it up right and i think that's that that whole ability to be a warrior and that's whether you're fighting an illness or you're a business owner or, or whatever it may be bottom line is that you, you have to suck it up and i think of like the fourth quarter of a, a basketball game right and you you grab the team as the captain you pull them together and you say hey we, we we can do this and i think that's the attitude you have whether you're fighting an issue in business or you're fighting a chronic illness from a standpoint you know kate i know you're you're going into business i i hope someday you're going to become an entrepreneur that would be my dream but uh but i think you got to get out there and experience the corporate world all that kind of good stuff but my question for you is is that you know as you think a little bit about going forward are there any people in your life that have kind of been mentors for you that that kind of show you that you know what you want to accomplish in business going forward is there any people you think about yeah so i i mean as a woman in business i i look up to female females who have really created a role for themselves. I think of um, my my good friend, your friend, uh, Christy Lockridge. She's a she's a major player in, in real estate, commercial real estate. And and I look at her and I see all that she does and it, it inspires me because she has a team of people working under her. And I I hope eventually one day I'll be able to to lead a team through through business. And then I, I see my um so I'm, I'm an accounting major, unlike my dad, who just decided marketing, which is okay, dad, don't worry. All right, all right, a little dig there. I get it, right? So well, maybe not quite <laughs> well, as smart as you. Well enough <laughs> with marketing, but I'm, I'm going to the big guns accounting. Um, I think of um, a family friend who was a big accounting in, in BP, and, and to me, it's, it's inspiring to see women in, in strong roles among business. It's, it's something I hope and I, I will do. You, know? uh, you will do. Absolutely. No, I think that's right. I mean, it, your journey has been tough over the last two years, but I think it makes you a stronger person and um, it doesn't make it easier. It just makes it, it makes you a stronger person. Uh, and I think it sets you up for even more success moving forward. You know, Kate, um, you know, I would say, do you follow any inspirational leaders? But, you, you know, I, I'm not I'm not going to ask you that question, but but do you do you have a favorite book? Um Oh, well, let me, let me think on the top of my head. Uh, let me just read, read right off to the paper here. I, I got to say, hire yourself, right? Oh, very, you're a smart kid, right? So yes, yes. I, I thank you for <laughs> here tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I wasn't looking for a cheap endorsement for the book, but, uh, but, uh, but a wise answer anyways, you know, Kate, so as you think about going forward and you've got these fundraising events uh, from a standpoint, certainly people uh, can help out by donating money. They can be active in that kind of stuff. You know, what is your aspiration kind of as you're on the Crohn's Colitis Foundation, um, Collegiate Foundation, you know, what's your aspiration? It, you know, if I, if I was interviewing you five years from now, what would you say you guys have accomplished a, as a group? Um, honestly, just bringing awareness to this. I talked about it a little before, but the idea of an invisible disease is you can't see the the suffering that a lot of people are going on. You can't see that, you know, I'm chronically fatigued and I'm not able to do as much as people can, or, you know, you're not able to see the the days in the hospital where I'm, where I'm drawing blood and running tests and, and the, the lack of answers. So being able to create a community for people who, who struggle with this to know that they're seen and they're heard, it's something super important. And just to bring awareness to, to IBD because you know I I'm guilty of of before before this chronic illness I had no idea even when I got diagnosed I barely even knew what it was and just to bring awareness to I mean this disease is just it's it's a beast and and to be able to bring awareness um, and share my story so that when others get diagnosed they can have a support network. Yeah, yeah, that's a noble cause, and and I'm really excited for you. So I'll I'll be at the uh, fundraising events. You got my support from a standpoint, and I'm so proud of you. I mean, it's it's been a, a journey, and uh, your journey's not done. Uh, you're going to accomplish great things, and and that's that's life from, from that standpoint. So uh, thank you for being a guest, and, and again, uh, you should be very proud of yourself of of how you're helping build awareness for Crohn's and colitis uh, out there today. 
Thank you for having me. I just want to reiterate that donations are very much appreciated and they go towards a worthy cause. So if you can and are able, the smallest monetary donation can go towards supporting me and others with IBD. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Hire Yourself podcast. For more resources, check out our website at hireyourself.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast to receive each episode. Please leave us a rating and we'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions for topics.